In this corner, the all-new Mafex Black Costume Spider-Man. And in this corner, the Marvel Legends Retro Card Symbiote Spider-Man. Is this a fair fight? No. But it's still a conversation worth having. Place your bets. This versus is going to surprise you. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Starting off with the packaging, both figures have been approached very differently. Legends, of course, is on a retro-style blister card. Spider-Man animated series logo up top. Symbiote suit Spider-Man artwork on the side. And then we get a lot more graphics on the back. We can see that symbiote artwork again. A retro-style diagram showing us the interchangeable hands. Pretty much what I was referring to in my Apocalypse video. And a bio. And then down here are the other figures in the wave. The Mafex, by contrast, comes in a window box. Not entirely sure why it says Double Trouble, but it does remind me of an old comic book. And down here we can see this is the 147th Mafex figure. Black costume Spider-Man down here. Logos over here. Logo and product shot on one side. A different one on the other. All sorts of rigmarole down here. That of course includes the non-reproducible Miticom foil sticker and a plethora of pictures and features on the back. There are a few things that tickle my heartstrings more than a well-realized retro card, but we all know how much I love my window boxes. And Mafex is always feels like a real celebration of the character. For packaging, this round goes to Mafex. Moving on to presentation, and Mafex stands at just over six inches. Legend stands at just over six and a quarter. The Marvel Legends figure is a repaint of the retro card Spidey. He does, however, have an all new head. I do like the eyes in the profile. The eyes on the Mafex are a bit bigger and also have a furrowed brow. As for reuse, because I don't have any other Mafex Spider-Man figures, I can't really comment on that. That being said, it wouldn't shock me if the groin and upper legs were reuse. I'm also anticipating that they're going to reuse a lot of this for their upcoming Scarlet Spider. On the Mafex figure, the logo's been sculpted in and very cleanly painted. Slightest amount of slop here, and also a tiny chip or two on the back. The Marvel Legends logo has been painted on. That said, they did use a 3D paint on it, which does give it the illusion of being sculpted. Unfortunately, it's a little bit obvious where the two sections meet, and for whatever reason, they didn't use the 3D paint for the lower abdomen. I also think they kind of extended it a bit on the low side, similar to the King and Black Venom. Flipping it around, though, we can see that it does continue onto the butterfly joints. We can also see a little bit of slop here. Both figures have the white patch simply painted onto the back of the hand. The Mafex one is shaped correctly. This one's just more of a rectangle. But both of them are missing the little black dot that I associate with the look. One cool detail is that the Mafex figure has blue soles to his feet. On the other hand, the Marvel Legends one has peg holes. So I guess it really comes down to which matters more to you. Also, it's difficult to see on camera, but there is a light brushing of dark blue on certain areas of the Mafex. Marvel Legends is a bit bulkier, which reminds me a lot of his earlier appearances after Secret Wars, and the larger eye gangly look reminds me of McFarlane's artwork when he took over the book. This might be a surprising and unpopular opinion, but I actually think that the Marvel Legends proportions are better. Taking a closer look at Mafex, and his head seems a bit big, whereas his hands and feet just seem too small. If you'd permit me just a small amount of editing magic, the silhouette that Marvel Legends cuts is simple simply more natural, especially when you look at its joints compared against the Mafex. Similar to a DC multiverse, and it kind of looks like he's wearing a diaper. One thing that Mafex has going for it over Marvel Legends, however, is pinless joints. The irony being that if Hasbro had just waited until Renew Your Vows came out, they could have used that pinless body for this, and even have toe joints. And what may be the single biggest shocker of this video, aside from, you know, shocker! For a presentation, this round goes to Legends. Moving on to posability, and that's where things get really competitive between these two. For on the top, and both figures' heads are on dumbbell joints. Mafex has a little bend in his barbell to look up a bit more. Marvel Legends achieves that with a little notch in the base of the skull. Mafex does, however, go one step beyond with an extra point of articulation at the base of the neck. As you can see, it's a ball joint. Putting them side by side, Mafex can definitely look up more. Also note the gap on Marvel Legends. Looking down, there's no contest there either. Mar 
Marvel Legends can tilt his head side to side, but again, the neck piece on Mayfex does give increased range. Moving down and just using the shoulder articulation, Mayfex can lift his arm 90 degrees. Marvel Legends, sadly, only about 45. I specify the shoulder articulation because both figures have a kind of sort of butterfly joint. Marvel Legends is more traditional. It just hinges forward and back. Mayfex, however, is kind of like a McFarlane rotator cuff. The difference is how deeply it's cut into the chest. This allows for a really great range. Using all his arm articulation, he can raise his arm up this much. He can push his arms back that far, or forward this far. Both figures have bicep swivels that function pretty much the same way. They also have double jointed elbows, which have been realized differently. Marvel Legends is a more traditional double hinge. They can flex this much, which is pretty impressive. Mayfex's gears, however, are more internal. The result is that they're pinless, and they do cut a bit deeper. At the end of the arms, Marvel Legends have swivel hinge wrists. They allow for turning and also hinging up and down. Mayfex, however, has wrist balls more in line with what we see from McFarlane. These allow the hands to swivel and not only hinge up and down, but if you turn the hand also side to side. Both figures have diaphragm joints and that allows them to twist, arch back and forth, and also move diagonally. But whereas Marvel Legends has a reverse ab crunch, Mayfex has a dumbbell waist. A pose like this for Marvel Legends is really impressive, but then you look at what Mayfex can do. As I said in presentation, it's not as pretty, but you can't argue with the results. Below the waist, the both figures have ball jointed hips. Marvel Legends can kick this far and split this far. Mayfex, however, can kick this far and split this far. And if that wasn't enough, both figures have drop hinge hips. Utilizing that, Marvel Legends suddenly has a much higher kick. Then again, so does Mayfex. Moving down to Mayfex gets a bit of twist at the hip. Marvel Legends, however, gets a thigh cut. Opponents will, of course, say that a thigh cut is uglier, though on an all black figure, I don't think it really stands out as much. Moving down, and both of them have double jointed knees with Mayfex bending just a bit deeper. Marvel Legends has a boot cut, which I imagine some will say look ugly. He also has ankles that can hinge and pivot. Mayfex, however, has toe articulation and ankle balls that can swivel, hinge, and pivot. The retro card base is one of the best articulated Spider-Man figures Hasbro has ever made. But the added range in the neck, shoulders, torso, and toes cannot be beat. For posability, this round goes to Mayfex. Before we continue, if you like this video, do me a favor and give it a like. I put a lot of love into my videos and your likes really do help more people to see them. Moving on to playability, and Marvel Legends comes with a small variety of very useful hands. He comes preloaded with these fists. He also has wall crawling hands and thwip hands. As I see it, that is the bare minimum of hands that Spider-Man should come with. Mayfex, on the other hand, takes it a bit further. Their Spidey comes pre-posed with relaxed hands, which the other one doesn't even have at all. That said, he also comes with fists, wall crawling hands, and thwip hands. And if that wasn't enough, he comes with alternate wall crawling hands and feet with magnets in- oh, that's the wrong one. And if that wasn't enough, he also comes with alternate wall crawling hands and feet with magnets in them. And if all that wasn't enough, he even comes with these accessory holding hands. And by accessories, I mean five different web lines. Out of all the different webs, these are the only two that have handles. He can hold those like so. Oh, and did I say five web lines? I meant six, because these four have hoops around them for his wrists. This allows him to thwip two shorter webs and two longer ones. Word of the wise though, my right thwip hand is a bit loose. And not only does he come with web lines, he also comes with a web backpack. Thanks to those superposable arms, it slips over his shoulder with no trouble. And if you're wondering, you can also slip it onto the back of Marvel Legends. On that note, you can also use the web lines. One thing you can't share between these two, however, are the heads, as the peg balls are simply too different. And that's a shame, because in addition to this head, Mayfax also comes with this one, which I'll be honest, honest, isn't really different enough for me to see the point. I'd have much rather seen something like this with the smaller eyes. But one thing that is pretty cool is that he comes with an alternate Peter Parker head and neck. Zooming in, we can see the symbiote sliding up to his head, and that quintessential five o'clock shadow that Peter had every time he used the suit. An alternate head would have definitely elevated the Marvel Legends figure, but if you have the Renew Your Vows 2 pack, you could always use that version. But if you really want something angrier and more her suit, you could always use this alternate head that came with 
with Cosmic Spider-Man. Lastly, he comes with a flight stand. There's a nice wide clamp for his body, a narrower one, whatever this one is for, and this extra stick. One thing I really like is that all the additional hands and feet have these little trees to sit on so you don't lose them to the carpet goblins. Lucky for Marvel Legends, playability is more than just accessories. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. For a small selection of symbiote Spider-Mans, and here we have the very first one ever made. This, of course, was from Secret Wars by Mattel. Here's a Toy Biz one from the Spider-Man animated series. If memory serves, this was from a Sam's Club exclusive Venom Saga box set. Here we have Spider-Man Classics by Toy Biz. This was the first six-inch scale black suit Spider-Man ever made. And then here we have an early release by Hasbro. First, some good old-fashioned red and blue Spider-Mans, and here we have that first Spider-Man classic from 2000. In a lot of ways, the Mafex one reminds me of this. Here we have a retro card Spidey, which the new one shares a base body with. And then here we have Renew Your Vows Spider-Man, which is virtually identical except for pinless joints, toe articulation, and head. For just a few other noteworthy Spider-Man variations, and here we have Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, and the Iron Spider. For some spider heroes who are neither Peter Parker nor his clone, here we have Spider-Man 2099, the Gamerverse Miles Morales, and the Into the Spider-Verse Spider-Gwen. That said, for an important spider ally, here we have Black Cat. She actually made him the cloth version of his black costume. And then for some civilians, here we have Peter Parker, Mary Jane Watson, and Gwen Stacy. Gwen is a perfect segue to the Green Goblin. This one is by Toy Biz. But for some other noteworthy Spider-Man villains, and here we have Craven the Hunter. Black costume Spider-Man is particularly appropriate for the Craven's Last Stand story. Here we have Mysterio. I filled his helmet with pillow stuffing to give him a more ethereal look. Here we have Retro Electro and Absolute Carnage. Fun fact, he's called Absolute Carnage because he's actually made out of vodka. Of course, for a Spider-Man 3 matchup, you're going to want Sandman. And for a Spider-Man the Animated Series matchup, we've got to have Shocker! Shocker! Here we have the Retro Card Rhino, and then for just a small variety of Venoms, here we have Monster Venom, Marvel Select, and the King in Black. For a relative scale comparison, here they are with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. Although I do mean it when I say that playability is more than accessories, accessories are a pretty big deal. Especially when you stop to consider just how much this one actually comes with. The fact that he scales pretty well with your Marvel Legends doesn't hurt either. For playability, this round goes to Mafex. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. And yeah, you probably know how this round is gonna go. Marvel Legends is a mass market domestic release that retails for about $25, of course, if you can find it. Mafex, however, is an import brand by Medicom, which set me back about $123, including shipping. In terms of accessories, quality materials, and engineering, they can't be beat. But for $25, bucks, this really is isn't bad. Don't get me wrong, you'll definitely get your money's worth with Mafex, but if all you want is just a really good, really affordable black costume Spider-Man, you can't go wrong with the retro card. In fact, even after all this, it's the one I'll be displaying in my collection. For price, this round goes to Legends, but the winner is Mafex 3-2. For another Spider-Man Versus, check out this one on Ben Riley. Or for more of the symbiote costume, check out this video on Venom. Do you have a preference between Mafex and Marvel Legends? Sound off in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.